Hello, my name is Cecilia Landa from the School of Design and Creative Arts at Loughborough University. Today's presentation is about a holistic outcome-based approach to co-create healthcare systems. This is a part of my PhD research at Loughborough. This presentation has six sections that describe the development of a holistic outcome-based approach. In healthcare, a patient has multiple outcomes. However, there are other stakeholders with multiple outcomes as well. This is why outcomes in healthcare are really complex. And sometimes this can look like they are looking for different things or following different paths. So this means that right now we have different stakeholders with their own outcomes and some of their actions really help to achieve the purpose, but others don't. So this approach proposed that we focus into define a clear purpose, creating a mutual understanding with the different stakeholders, and then spending more time about outcomes, how they interact and how they can really contribute to achieve this purpose. Sometimes outcomes are described as the result of a visible effect that occurs after some explicit action. However, this doesn't reflect complex systems principles which mention that outcomes emerge from multiple interactions and don't behave in a linear way. We recognize that emergence is a critical aspect that can be explored by understanding multiple outcomes interactions. Also, we emphasize that holistic perspective needs to include meaningful human aspects and don't be limited by the convenience of the evaluation. So briefly, I want to mention some frameworks that have influenced this approach. Cognitive work analysis, systems engineering initiative for patient safety, and others such as quality aims, patient priority cares, and systemic design. All of them acknowledge that there are multiple outcomes interacting in systems. CWEA, for example, uh, create a file-level structure in which links outcome with other elements. Also, it's key to point that CWEA established that outcomes and value are in the same level. SIPs, for example, as well categorize outcomes based on stakeholder goals. It is critical how outcomes in SIPs generate feedback loops to adapt the system. Finally, systemic design has helped us uh, with a lot of participatory methods for gathering and visualizing complex data. The aim of this paper is to develop and evaluate a holistic outcome-based approach to healthcare system co-creation. In order to achieve that, we will present the concept and role of outcomes, the development process of the holistic outcome-based approach and finally, we will present findings of applying this approach in two different cases. How this outcome-based approach has been developed? We have used the design research methodology to develop this approach. This methodology has four different stages. This paper presents only stage two and three. We have concluded the five different steps to develop this approach. The overall process to develop this approach can be synthesized in four actions. The first one is the outcome identification that was conducted through a literature review. Then is the outcome visualization tool development. In this uh, action, we define the functions and the outcome-based mapping process. Also, we designed outcome cards and outcome tokens. The third action was uh, to define the mapping sessions that were conducted in both participatory and one-to-one -one sessions. And finally, we also defined the data analysis through a network analysis. Step one, task clarification. This approach aims to assist the healthcare stakeholders to co-create complex systems based on a holistic understanding. This means to include a diversity of meaningful outcomes for different stakeholders, including a mix of objective, subjective, self-reported, anecdotal, and quantitative and qualitative as well. 
This table shows the diversity of outcomes that has been included through the development of this approach. We won't go in detail into each of the categories, but outcomes such as well-being and safety, personal resilience, pain, anxiety, use of community services, and trusting physicians have been included. Step two of the development is to define the functions. This approach has four different functions. The first one is to provide a shared language between the different stakeholders. Second is to identify disagreement and trade-offs between the needs of the different stakeholders. The third one is to develop a balanced understanding of those needs. And finally, is to help them to make holistic decisions. Step three and four is elaboration and realization of the approach. Outcome-based system visualization has been the main dialogical device to construct the systems. This is an example of the system visualization that have been emerged from the participatory sessions. And this is another example from one-to-one -one sessions. There are another tangible interfaces that are part of this step. For example, we have designed outcome cards to help participants to meet the outcomes. In the back of the cards, participants can read descriptions and tools that can be useful to monitor each of them. Outcome tokens has been built to help participants during the mapping process. Also, places and people representation has been useful to relate outcomes with these elements. The final step of the development is the evaluation. We have used this approach in two different cases. The first one is during participatory sessions and the second is on one-to-one -one sessions. In participatory sessions, design practitioners and human factor students have been our participants. We have engaged with patients living with chronic conditions and healthcare providers during the one-to-one -one sessions. The process has been adapted to fit each of them. In the participatory sessions, we have included an individual visualization task. In the one-to-one -one session, we have included a semi-structured interview and verification questions. The data analysis has been different. At the beginning, we tried frequencies and identification of visual structure. However, on one-to-one -one sessions, we tried network analysis. More detail of each of the cases is provided on the paper. For the data analysis, we applied network analysis. And in order to build the networks, we need to establish some criteria. On the right, you can see an example of one of the diagrams that emerged during our session. And the criteria were as follows. First, each of the outcome is a node. Second, links like this one were undirected age with a value of two. Links that have arrowheads like this one uh, were directed age with a value of two. And finally, outcomes inside of groups like these or these were on directed H with a weight of 1. We will present the results from the two cases. We want to communicate how outcomes interact among each other. At the beginning, from the participatory sessions, we count the frequencies of use of outcomes. This is an example of the results. You can notice that we create five different categories and also we show how many of the outcomes of each category have been used. However, we discard this type of result after the first use because it didn't, it didn't show how outcomes relate among each other. So we need something more graphical. Then on the one-to-one -one sessions, we try network analysis. This type of analysis helps us to identify critical outcomes and implicit priorities that participants didn't express during interviews or mapping processes. Also, this type of diagram helps us to identify agreements and disagreements between the different stakeholders. For example, we can contrast this diagram that represents patients 
with the diagram that represent providers. Immediately, we can notice that there are different outcomes in different sizes and different places, and also we notice that there are different relationships among the different outcomes. The role of outcomes in healthcare systems development. Outcomes can help to build a shared understanding of meaningful needs of the different stakeholders. Outcomes are useful for open mapping and to trigger multiple views. This is thanks to the diversity of outcomes included in this approach. Outcomes are a user-friendly way for engaged different stakeholders as systems co-creators. Healthcare practitioners were really engaged during the mapping process thanks to the diversity of outcomes token. Finally, outcomes can trigger conflict-based discussions and conversations around systems trade-offs. Synergy and interdisciplinarity. This approach highlights that we need to move from problem solving to framing complex situations. And this means that we need to spend more time in to really understand the whole of the situation rather than jump into solutions. However, understanding complex situations is a constant learning process because situations change all the time. Also, this approach helps to expand healthcare evaluation and monitoring. For example, network analysis diagrams are a novel way of constructing evidence, including outcomes from quantitative and qualitative approaches, as well as anecdotal data. To conclude, we want to mention some key points. First, Different stakeholders engage in complex conversations thanks to this approach. The use of outcomes help them to build a common ground, and the network analysis diagrams also help them to visualize the whole picture of healthcare. Second, larger action-based applications of this approach are needed to assess their impact. Third, we need to reconceptualize outcomes in depth. We need to clarify difference with concepts such as goals, impacts, needs, values, and purpose. And finally, outcomes can be design drivers that provide a more holistic vision of the interrelated needs of different stakeholders. Thanks for watching. On the screen, you have my contact details in case you have any questions. Bye.